Hello, and thanks for joining Mara TV. I'm Caroline Boyd. Our guest today is John Dvorak, Chief Architect for Red Hat's North American Public Sector Business. Welcome to Mara TV, John. Thank you, Caroline. Great to be here. You're an expert at emerging technologies, open source, and cybersecurity with deep public and private sector IT leadership experience. So I'm excited to have you here today. We're going to be talking edge computing. I know it's a buzz phrase of late, but it's a longstanding challenge for deployed military units. And the need for it is growing as employees increasingly work from anywhere. What should agencies first understand and consider as they approach edge computing? Well, the first thing I like to think about when think about edge computing, it's, it's really a continuum. Uh, this isn't like uh, there's the data center and then there's IOT, you know, there's, there's not, it's not binary. There's these, these layers of edge. And that's really important for any enterprise because in each organization, they're gonna be thinking about edge differently depending on their deployment modes. Um, so you talk about sometimes in the military, the tactical edge, and that's, that's the guys deployed out in, out, out in the military on the edge of the en environment, sometimes in hostile areas. We have the industrial edge, which are you know sensors and actuators with industrial uh, complexes. And then we have things we sometimes call sort of the forward edge. So these are more traditional systems, but they're just not in the data center. They're, they're out in the field. So it's important to think about that when, you, when you're architecting these solutions, that it's, it's, it's really layered. Um, some other things that they, I, when I talk about edge, I'm not talking about IoT in the sense of uh, sensors that are, you know, checking the temperature and, and sending you telemetry information from your car. We're really talking about systems that can be used for things like data science and for analytics. Uh, you know, what you'd see as traditional computer systems in, in, a, in a field environment, um, which could be terrestrial or as we may talk about later, extraterrestrial. So, um, and then some other things to consider uh, data protection is a little different on the edge. Uh, these are devices that potentially could fall into the hands of uh, you know other parties, the enemies, uh, they it could be a jet that falls off uh, unfortunately into the ocean, and we're trying to rescue it. So uh, these are we have to think about data protection a little differently because these systems generally don't aren't in uh, uh, fortified locations with security guards and and, and what have you. Um, and then sort of the last part of edge as we think about it is it does need to be built in such a way that has reach back capability to the enterprise when it needs to have reach back capability. So it's important to think about identity and identity management uh, so that the right people with the, you know, right, the, the right people at the right time can get access to these systems in the field, um, even in what might be you know, disconnected environments. I understand that edge can reduce bandwidth constraints and provide better control over that movement of data that you're talking about. How do you see federal agencies taking advantage of these opportunities today? Right. So the old way we think of the edge is, is kind of uh, a bunch of devices out there that are bringing, you know, information back to the core of the network, you know, slowly through some, some mechanism or another. The great thing about what we're seeing uh, now with, with uh, some mesh topologies on the edge is the ability for edge systems to actually communicate with one another at the edge. So we're able to use, uh, you know, everyone's heard of 5G, you know, this is the up and coming sort of faster than anything we've had before uh, for uh, cellular networks. And so for many environments, 5G is gonna be uh, a, a capable enabler for this kind of communication. So we're gonna start to see, you know, systems being able to communicate at high speed, sharing data, sharing uh, compute capability uh, across the edge. And then another really, cool thing that we're seeing used across government today, uh, and we're gonna see more of it, is these low earth orbit uh, communication networks. So this has come up in the news recently, you know, there were some solar flares and, and, and one vendor you know, devices fell out of the sky, but these are these high bandwidth, you know, lower than typical uh, orbit um, systems that allow us to communicate and not just sort of communicate from point to point, but potentially, in the future here, be able to actually do some level of analytics uh, in that low earth orbit. Uh, so those are some ways we're seeing uh, in terms of use cases and, and ability to kind of communicate at the edge that uh, just weren't even available five years ago. I see what you mean about the extraterrestrial aspects you mentioned earlier. So as IT teams build out edge computing infrastructure, well, what are some of the key considerations they need to be taking into account? 
Yeah, so all the things that I think most teams today know sort of the, a lot of the, the typical constraints uh, at the edge. So they're, they're not every edge system has the same constraints. So I just, I'll, I'll generalize here. Uh, they're typically uh, systems that have limited connectivity or intermittent connectivity, sometimes no connectivity. Uh, they're, they're constricted by size, weight, power, those, those types of things. So any kind of architectural decision making has to think about uh, those constraints. I mean, they're certainly not the constraints you see in a data center. Um, so that's very, very important to think about. And another thing, I, you know, it's, it's important to, for, for you know, technologists today to realize that we should be in, and can and should be using commodity infrastructure uh, in edge environments. So the same sort of infrastructure we use in the data center, we can use in the edge at a smaller scale. Uh, and, and this is important. So what we call it is uh, like back pay, back plane agnostic. We want to build systems that allow us uh, to move uh, move workloads anywhere to any kind of device uh, anywhere in our network, whether you know the core or any layer of the edge. And we don't want to have to rely on having to reprogram for specialized systems uh, that just exist in the edge environment. So that's really you know I'd say that's a important to understand uh, this is this is a an environment now that isn't constrained by you know very specialized systems that we have to think about it um, and so and we also want to think about uh, flexibility and low maintenance so the edge systems today they might be designed initially for one purpose but used for another purpose so you can imagine like in the military operation maybe you're first needing a system that's analyzing flight telemetry information and need another system, you, you, you need the same, in the same location, you need something to be able to do video surveillance analysis or something like that. We should be able to push workloads that we need to these systems without having to, you know, have them drop ship a new system in, in potentially hostile territory. Uh, the other thing is we need these systems to be low maintenance. So when we start thinking about putting the edge in space and edge in hostile places or edge on ships, for example, we don't. We can't call the IT guys to bring some new equipment. You know, this has got to be stuff that we can find on the ship, or we can find on the you know, on the truck and replace parts and things like that. So, those are all um, you know the kind of you know thinking we do as architects when we start to consider the you know the best uh, the best way to build for the future on the edge. So you're touching on scaling applications at the edge. Um, how can agencies address data security concerns as they do that, and what are some of the challenges? Right. So as we mentioned before, these are devices that potentially now it all depends on your your data. But let's if we're thinking about military purposes, or we're thinking about maybe specialized scientific purposes, or even corporate purposes where that data is sensitive, these are not locked in cabinets inside data centers. These are devices that are out there. They're on the back of uh, you know vehicles. They might be in in four deployed apartment locations. Just whatever can be set up tents. You know those sort of things. So. We need to think about uh, encryption and have a cryptographic solutions that can deal with the sensitivity of the data to the right level of sensitivity of the data uh, in these environments. So if they do get lost, we don't care. We, we worry because we lost some equipment, but we don't worry about the data. Uh, so that's really important. Another thing is, so when we start to talk about cryptographic solutions, the first you know complaint I always get is, well, yes, but if we do that, system performance, latency, all of these things are. Uh, you know, come into play. Now I've, you know, I've got a, can I do this data science project or can I be encrypted, but I can't do both. The beauty is uh, there's been a lot of advancement in technology that allows us to architect these types of devices in such a way that we can do it with very low latency, near zero impact to, to data science. Um, you know, Red Hat's been working with its ecosystem partners on encryption and building better encryption solutions. Uh, we've done a lot of advancements recently, just for example, with a company called Zetaset, uh, which is a software-defined encryption provider. Uh, they're one of our one of our top partners in our ecosystem, and they build these kinds of solutions uh, that we can apply, of course, in the data center, but also in edge environments where we're very sensitive uh, to workload and latency issues. So you mentioned a couple of things that Red Hat is doing with partners. How is Red Hat working with federal agencies to bring some of those innovations to the edge? And, and maybe you could tease us with what are some of the innovations that are on the horizon? Okay, right. Well, a lot of really neat, I, I touched on a couple of these because they're, they're top of mind. Um, 
So we there, there's some great great deployments we've done recently. Uh, like thinking about the DoD, because you mentioned uh, defense earlier. Uh, in in the Navy, you have these ships, uh, you know, all all over the world, right? And and these are in locations that have uh, limited connectivity. Uh, you know, if you have to do any kind of analysis or data science or you know major workloads, uh, you're not sending that back to the cloud typically. I mean, these are these are systems that are that are far distant from uh, from from your shores. So we need data. You need data solutions. So we've been doing a lot of work with the U.S. Navy for the deployment of of, of these reusable. And we talked about that before. Really important um, commodity based uh, systems that are like little mini data centers floating on ships. So they have they have their their limited space, and and that's one thing we're doing. Another really exciting one that's uh, that's uh, you can read about um, in the in the news wires about Red Hat um, is is the International Space Station. Uh, which we partnered with with IBM and, and others to, to build a solution where you can do scientific work on the International Space Station and and do that uh, that data science locally, process that data without having to send it to the ground. Now you can imagine, like as we get further and further out to space, it's going to be more and more impossible to do analysis and have to wait for the analysis weeks for the data to get back and then grind through those numbers. So you can do really incredible scientific experiments right in space where you're collecting the data, analyze that data, and then take what's important and send it back to the investigators on the ground. Not all of it. You don't have to send the raw material back. And you can do a lot of the analysis right on right on uh, the space station. So we're seeing a lot of things there. Another thing that I find really exciting uh, is where we're going on the state level with, with smart cities. Um, and this is kind of an over the horizon scenario. But you know, this is a perfect use of, of edge technology, uh, telemetry data about things like air, you know, uh, the downdraft effects within within cities. Um, so if you ever walk through New York City and on a windy day, you know, you might get blown over uh, because of the wind that's that that's uh, between the buildings. So imagine if you started to let's say you wanted to do drones and have drones in a, a civilian uh, setting, delivering medicine, uh, delivering your packages, that sort of thing used for law enforcement, whatever it happens to be, and you wanna send them through city streets. Um, well, how do you do that? These drones don't know what's going on around them, but the buildings do, you know? So having sensors around buildings and being able to do some kind of very like, real-time analysis, send those to those, you know, changes in flight patterns, like don't go down this street, you know, watch out for this, you know, device. These are perfect example, you know, edge use cases, which we're gonna see more and more of. And then I'd say um, the last thing that I think is really interesting is we're starting to see you know, we've seen um, improvements in CPUs, we've seen improvements in GPUs, the uh, graphics processing units, and now we have data processing units, DPUs, which are offloading a lot of the things like communications and networking from the CPUs, so we can do lots of band, you know, data um, communication without affecting the, the number crunching that the CPUs are doing. So these are these are all things that I think you're going to see more and more, uh, you know, more use uh, within within the edge community. I'm very excited to see how Edge expands in the next couple of years. And it's been great to hear about all the new capabilities that are coming um, and what it's going to bring to defense and civilian agencies. So, John, you've given us a lot of food for thought. Uh, thanks so much for being part of Merit TV today. It's been great being here. Thanks for having me. This Merit TV program is part of a series of one on one interviews with government IT movers and shakers. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us again soon.